each of you and welcome to the Holy Week services of the historic First Baptist Church of Norfolk, located at 418 East Butte Street in downtown Norfolk, Virginia, where the Reverend Dr. Robert G. Murray is senior pastor. We are bringing to you what the gospel teaches us about Jesus' final days in Jerusalem, culminating with Good Friday and his death on the cross. This week, several of our associate ministers, along with one of our associate pastors, will deliver to you the word of God that will not only shed light on the events of the week, but give you hope and assurance that though Jesus went to the cross to be crucified, it was all a part of God's plan of salvation that will be revealed through the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday morning, also celebrated as Resurrection Sunday. As you listen to the message today, open your heart to receive what God has for you. Open your heart also by supporting this work of ministry through the means provided on our website with Givelify and PayPal, or simply write to us at the historic First Baptist Church, 418 East Butte Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. For prayer and consultation, you may call 757-622-6701 and someone will address your need. And now, receive the word of the Lord. Well, this is day two and we just thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to share again with the people of God. Just want you to join in with us as we sing this hymn of the day. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea, oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. No precious is that flow that makes me white as snow, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me White as snow, oh, other fount I know, nothing but 
but the blood of Jesus. Come on, sing it. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. We are grateful for this opportunity to share with you a word from the Lord, and we are grateful for this week, this holy week, and uh, we just look forward to celebrating on this coming Sunday, Resurrection Day. God has blessed us, and we have this great opportunity to be together by way of uh, live streaming. We want to thank God for the team that has been working very diligently and vigilantly to make sure that we are connected. And I promise you that we are exercising social distancing as we record or as we present to you these worship experiences. Go with me, if you will, to the word of God. From two of the gospel writers, we'll read first from Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 6. And then Matthew 27, verse 1 through 5. From the Good News Bible, today's English version, hear ye these words. The time was near for the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were afraid of the people, and so they were trying to find a way of putting Jesus to death secretly. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples. So Judas went out and spoke with the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard about how he could portray Jesus to them. They were pleased and offered to pay him money. Judas agreed to it and started looking for a good chance to hand Jesus over to them without the people knowing about it. And then Matthew chapter 27, beginning with verse 1 through verse 5. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders made their plans against Jesus to put him to death. They put him in chains, led him off, and handed him over to Pilate, the, royal, the Roman govern, governor. When Judas, the traitor, learned that Jesus had been condemned, he repented. He repented and took the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and elders. I have sinned by betraying an innocent man to death, he said. What do we care about that, they answered. That is your business. Judas threw the coins down in the temple and left. And then he went off and hanged himself. Pray with me for just a few moments as I preach to you from the subject, how to get stuck, how to get out of a stuck position how to get stuck out of how to get out of a stuck position let us pray gracious and eternal god we know that this is holy week and we are endeavoring to remember what you have done for us through your son jesus christ and we pray oh god that you will bless this preaching moment that you will word my mouth and that you will uh, take over my thoughts as I present to your people what you have for us. For it is in the only name that matters, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. 
My brothers and sisters, despite the challenges believers may be facing, they do not have to be stuck in a position where they cannot be what God has called them to be. Let me say that again. Despite whatever challenges we may be facing at this moment, we do not have to be in, stuck in a position whereby we cannot be what God has called us to be. I remember the first time driving a car with a stick shift. I believe it was a Renault, a 1969 Renault my dad had, and you probably don't even remember what that kind of car looks like. But I remember it was a little red car and it only had three gears. I have watched my dad go th through the shifting of gears so smoothly that I had convinced myself that it was easy and that I could do it too. So I persuaded my dad to let my brothers and me drive to my grandmother's house from Colonial Place here in Norfolk to Tidewater Park, which is right around the corner, right up the street, actually. She lived on Finn Church Street. I was successful in getting my dad to allow us to, to take the car and drive it and to see our grandmother. We left the house without a problem until we decided to take the underpass at Monticello and 21st Street. As we were coming up the underpass, guess what happened? The light turned red. When it turned red, we stopped and we figured we were okay, but when the light turned green again, we realized that we were stuck. I had not figured out how to get the car in gear to take an incline. I watched my dad drive smoothly, but I didn't know how to get that car to move up a hill. We were stuck and we sat through three lights. There were some girls in the car behind us blowing their horn and just laughing at us. They were actually teasing us and asking us if, they, if we needed some help from them to get the car going. It was truly a challenge because we were stuck at the underpass, but we eventually figured it out. Today, we are living in a time where our faith and our worship are meeting challenges at enormous proportions. We have to be careful with what we allow to come in and influence us to move away from God, from what God has called us to be. And despite what we may think is happening, the truth is we could actually be stuck and need to confront our challenges. My brothers and sisters, there is a tendency to want to take matters into one's own hands. There is a tendency to place the attention on what we want for ourselves rather than what actually needs to happen. And there is a tendency to mess things up so badly that it is beyond our capacity to fix. In fact, we may find ourselves in the stuck position. I want to argue today that this is exactly where Judas found himself. You see, Judas was in a stuck position. He was one of the original 12 apostles, but the Bible says he was also a betrayer. The text betrays him as being found out by Jesus, but he had potential because Jesus chose him as one of his original disciples. This has always baffled me. I, 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 I always wondered how could one who had been with Jesus for three years and who had seen him open blind eyes and unstop deaf ears and, and cause lame people to walk, how could one portray such a man named Jesus? Yeah. What happened, Judas? What, what, what happened to you? You were a trusted servant from the very beginning because the group decided, apparently by consensus, that you would be their treasurer. How he came to acquire this position, history doesn't record. He held this position for at least three years, long enough to prove to them that he had some skills. 
But little clues along the way begin to surface when Ju Judas questioned what to do in certain fiduciary matters. He was stuck on what he thought should happen rather than what Jesus had in mind. And if you look at the passage just prior to what I read, when Jesus was in Simon's house, there was a woman who came in. Remember, there was a woman who came in with an alabaster box. And she broke it open and she poured oil on Jesus' feet and she anointed Jesus. And, and some of the disciples, and I know Judas was there because the Bible said that he soon left. But Judas was there and he, along with some of the disciples, felt that it was a waste of, of, of money for this woman to take this expensive uh, oil and, and pour it on Jesus. And Jesus uh, came to her defense. This story here that we are dealing with today gives us another clue. It says two days before the Last Supper, before the Passover, at the Last Supper, when Jesus spoke to his disciples that he was about to die, he also indicated that one of them sitting at the table would betray him. The story goes on to reveal that Jesus knew that Judas was stuck. Judas' stuckness is where we discover how we can become unstuck. This lesson today helps us in a very significant way because many of us are stuck in position. We're trying to move forward, but the gears just won't shift. We're trying to move up, but the incline is so steep that we are stuck in position. We're trying to move away from certain things, but we find ourselves, what is it, stuck in position. But Judas answers the question for us today. And that question is, what does one need to do in order to become unstuck? And I'm glad you're listening because I'm going to provide the answer that Judas provides for us today. In Luke chapter 22, verse 3, it says, Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the disciples. If you want to become unstuck then my brothers and sisters, you're going to have to let God have your whole heart and not just part of it. Right. Judas was with Jesus for three years. Apparently, he, did, he had not surrendered his whole heart unto God. It was, it was, he was there, just like we are there. However, when it comes to our heart, our heart is in a different place. And Judas apparently had his heart in a different place because the Bible says that Satan entered into him. Another translation reveals to us that, that Satan entered into the heart of Judas. If you want to get unstuck today, you're going to have to let God have your whole heart. You're going to have to surrender your whole self to him. You're going to have to surrender your whole mind to him. For he is able to do it, seated abundantly above all that you can even ask or think. It's according to the power that worketh in you, that power to surrender. And when you surrender your heart to him, you are moving towards being unstuck. I wish I had somebody to help me say, I want to be unstuck stuck and Lord I'm going to give you my whole heart not just part of it the next thing Judas helps us to see he helps us to see that you shouldn't let your desires overtake your need for in verses 4 through 6 so Judas went off and spoke with the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard about how he could portray Jesus to them they were pleased and offered to pay him money Judas agreed to it and started looking for a good chance to hand Jesus over to them without the people knowing about it. Here it is. Judas having an issue, a fiduciary issue, because he's so focused on what it would profit him monetarily that he let his desire overtake his need to support and to be with Jesus. But then there's another thing, his desire. He, along with the people, had already celebrated Jesus coming into Jerusalem, remember? And they hailed him as, as king. And they, they hailed him as the Messiah, the anointed one, who would deliver Israel. So 
Judas is probably trying to help God out. I'm going to force Jesus to bring this kingdom into, into the present. I'm going to force Jesus to do something that is not a part of the plan, but I figure uh, I, I have a little bit of influence. I, I, can, I can help this thing along. It wasn't his place. Jesus knew what the people needed. Jesus knew what we needed. And he wasn't going to let anyone deter him from the plan of salvation and the plan that God had already set in place. Don't let your desires overcome or overtake your need. And then finally, Matthew chapter 27, verse 1 through 5 says, Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders made plans against Jesus to put him to death. They put him in chains. They led him off and handed him over to Pilate the Roman governor. When Judas, the traitor, learned that Jesus had, had been condemned, he repented. Note that. He repented and took back the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned by betraying an innocent man to death, he said. What do we care about that, they answered. That is your business. Judas there threw the coins down in the temple and left. Then he went off and hanged himself. This final thing that Judas helps us to see is that forgiveness is an option. I found it fascinating as I was reading this because I have read this many times and I've preached about Judas many times, but I missed this point that Judas repented. He repented. He realized that he had done wrong. If you want to get unstuck, you have to realize that you've done something wrong. You put the focus in the wrong place. You, you put all of the attention on the wrong thing. You, you, you've, you've wasted a whole lot of time on a whole lot of nothing. And So all you need to do is ask for forgiveness because forgiveness is an option. The only problem with Judas here, once he asked for, for after he repented, he took matters again into his own hands. And that's what happens to a lot of us. Even though we repent, we have a tendency to come back and take matters into our own hands. But I want to tell you this today, my brothers and sisters, that if you want to get out of your, un out of your stuck position, you're going to have to let God have your whole heart and not part of it. You're going to have to uh, realize that, that your desires should not take precedent over your need. You, and then you're going to have to ask for forgiveness because forgiveness is an option. The word says that Judas ended up taking his own life, but there was someone else who was stuck. In fact, he was stuck on a cross next to Jesus on a hill called Golgotha. He too apparently allowed Satan to enter into his heart. He too allowed his desire to overtake his need for Jesus because the text says that he was a thief. But when he saw the condemnation of an innocent man, he exercised that third option that anyone who is spiritually stuck should exercise. Luke 23, verses 39 through 43 says, one of the criminals hanging there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, the one that was stuck, however, rebuked him saying, don't you fear God? Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right. But because we are getting because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. And I want to say to you that when you exercise that third option of forgiveness today, you can be where Jesus is. When you exercise the third option of forgiveness 
Jesus will come into your heart and he will abide with you so that you can abide with him. Today, you, can, you are becoming unstuck. He is loosening the chains that bound you. He is loosening the shackles that hold you down. You can become unstuck from that position that you are in. And I just need you to know today that Jesus is here and that Jesus is willing and that Jesus is able and that Jesus wants you to become unstuck. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for the word today. We thank you for the power of the word. For it is your word that heals us. And you remind us through Judas that we can become unstuck from the position that we find ourselves in. All we need to do is open up our hearts and give our hearts totally to you. Don't let our desires overtake our need for you and then exercise our right to come to you just as we are without one plea and ask for forgiveness for it is in the only name that matters Jesus the Christ we pray amen if there's someone under the sound of my voice that have heard the word today you don't have to be stuck any longer you can come to Jesus while you have time. You can come to Jesus. All you need to do is make up your mind. He will make a way for you. He will see you safely through. Just come. Come to Jesus right where you are. Just, just open up your heart and say, Lord, I'm tired of being stuck. Help me today as I yield my heart to you. I confess my sins. And I give myself to you. I receive you now to my heart. Lord Jesus. Thank you. For what you did for me. On Calvary. Thank you. For it is in the only name that matters. Jesus the Christ we pray.